Hi there psychedelic star children, welcome to Self Love September 2017, the fourth fucking year of me spending all September harping on about one of my favourite topics and that is self love. Self love is super important to me and I'm assuming if you're watching this video it's super important to you or at the very least you are somebody that wants to focus particularly on addictive tendencies that you or somebody that you love might be experiencing and get some more information on that relative to self love and practising self love. So welcome, welcome to video one. I hope that you can get something out of this resource. So I've sat down and I've really thought about what I want to say in relation to this. It is a massive, massive topic. I cannot cover everything, but I'm going to try my hardest to just really lean into some of the main key points that I think it's important to address. And I'm hoping that for those of you who are struggling with addictive tendencies or with a full on addiction issue, if you're struggling with a resurfacing issue, or if you are just for the very first time beginning to accept that you may have an addiction, I'm hoping that this is helpful. So the first thing I want to start off by saying during the course of this video is that different types of addictions operate in different ways. We can have an addiction to pretty much anything. The way in which I'm going to be approaching the topic of addiction is going to be across the board, but I do want to state for the record that obviously some addictions are physiological in nature. There are certain substances that the body itself becomes dependent upon, and it's very important that when we're focusing on those kinds of addictions, such as addictions to opioids or alcohol, that we consult professionals, that we make sure that we um, come off of those drugs in the correct way, etc. We can become addicted to absolutely anything, psychologically. There are people who are addicted to gambling, sex, food, uh, people that are addicted to their phones, that's a very common one these days. You can become addicted to spending, you can become addicted to social media. There are so many different ways in which addiction can show itself. There are many different ways that it manifests. I always recommend seeking out resources that specifically speak to the kind of addictive tendencies or full-blown addic addiction that you actually are dealing with. So this video is general, I'm talking about addiction in general, but I would definitely recommend that you you go out there and you imbibe resources that cater to your specific needs because different forms of addiction tend to present themselves in different ways and if you are for example addicted to your phone then looking at blog posts that have been written by people who were addicted to their phone and got over it or watching videos that aim to help people that are addicted to using their phone and won't put their phone down they're going to um, offer very specific advice about that addiction in particular. If you're addicted to sex, then going and imbibing resources which cater specifically to sex addiction, obviously are going to give tips that are particularly going to be more relatable and they're going to be more in keeping with what's going on with you whereas this video is more of um, general advice. Your addiction may not necessarily look like somebody else's addiction who happens to be addicted to the same thing that you are. Your addiction may not fit the medical criteria or what seems to be the socially accepted criteria for the addiction that you have. But you may know that it is dangerous, that it is disruptive, that you need help with it and that you need to deal with it. If you know those things about your addictive pattern, then own it, admit to it, get accountability for it. There are so many people out there who are struggling with an addiction and they're convincing themselves that they don't need to go and get some form of help or they don't need to admit it to themselves because their addiction doesn't fit the bill for what that particular addiction should be like or it hasn't completely destroyed their lives yet, it hasn't completely pulled the rug out from under them so they're okay and they don't need any help and they don't need to admit it to themselves. Likewise there are so many people who are suffering in silence not seeking help and not admitting it to themselves because they fear that they are not they're not unwell enough with the addiction they're not they're not struggling enough i suppose what i'm really talking about here is i'm talking about the denial that you actually need to own it and admit it and do something about it and that denial can come through looking at your addiction and thinking well i'm okay you know i'm still i've still got these elements of my life in order and i'm not you know destitute and i'm not desperate so i'm okay and then this other side of the scale where somebody might really want to get help but they're thinking to themselves oh nobody will believe me and i I feel like I'm not bad enough to warrant this help or I'm not bad enough to actually admit to myself and own the fact that I have this addiction. 
you know if you know that it's dangerous for you it's disruptive for you it's taking over your life you're becoming fixated on it it's really making you feel negative about everything it's making you feel afraid of your future prospects if you continue in this pattern then it is okay to own it it is okay to acknowledge it it's okay to ask your friends and loved ones to provide some form of accountability as you go through the work to dismantle the addiction and deal with it we tend to protect our addictions when we keep them to ourselves we keep them to ourselves as a form of protection we know that we actually would find it much harder to go on with our addictive patterns if we have opened up to friends to loved ones to professionals etc to people in our community about the problems that we have so we keep them very very close to our chest and there could be a hundred different ways of you convincing yourself that it's okay to not be honest about the extent of your addiction to not be honest about how much it's hurting you so I definitely think one of the first things to do if you know you're struggling with an addiction and you haven't disclosed it yet or you haven't truly admitted it even to yourself yet is to think about the value of doing that and think about whether or not it really is time to do that now this doesn't mean that everybody that you tell is going to be helpful and is going to acknowledge the extent of the problem that you're having though and that's something that I think a lot of people myself included in the past have had to learn the hard way sometimes when you open up to somebody about an addiction that you're struggling with they may choose to downplay that addiction they may choose to convince you that it's not as bad as you think it is or that it will be really easy for you to stop it or they may just not be able to support you but that doesn't mean that you should stop supporting yourself and it doesn't give you the green light to go back to the addictive behavior and not try and not keep acknowledging and admitting the problem once you have actually owned the fact that you are struggling with an addiction I would definitely recommend writing down the reasons why you want to deal with the addiction so start writing a list of the different reasons why you want to tackle it write a list of the different ways that you think your life will improve once you've tackled it maybe write a list of the things that you've noticed that are going wrong either internally or externally or both and think about how you want to be free of those issues and how you will be free of them when you actually um, start to get your addiction under control and realize that you do not have to keep going along with this narrative of addiction when I really wanted to quit smoking and I had made several attempts to quit smoking and it just wasn't working for me and I kept going back to a really heavy smoking habit I sat down a few times and wrote out lists and this really helped me it helped me to get a handle on what I was actually doing why I wanted to really stop and the list actually was quite long there were so many different things that I hadn't actually identified and become conscious of until I started um, kind of engaging my brain and writing this list so I realized that there were financial reasons why I wanted to stop there were all kinds of health reasons why I wanted to stop I uncovered all of this different stuff that I really didn't actually realize was a problem and this in turn led me to be being able to have a very clear vision of what I really thought my life would be like if I wasn't tied into this very intense addiction anymore. And that really helped me to see why it was important and why I needed to keep acknowledging that it was a problem. If this sounds like it's a good idea to you, then I would definitely recommend keeping the list somewhere close by, like in your purse, in your planner, um, on your fridge door, in your top bedroom drawer, somewhere like that, depending on the amount of privacy that you have and how many people you would want or not want to actually see this list of yours. And I'd recommend rereading it regularly and updating it where necessary. You will probably find that there are more things that you want to add to the list as you go along, and those things will reinforce your commitment to actually breaking the addiction. The next next thing that I'm going to suggest that you do if you know that you have some form of addiction is to make a list of the different high risk factors and triggers which tend to perpetuate the addictive pattern or lead you into the addictive behavior and the thing is that so many people have different triggers and different things that lead them towards the addictive behavior like different um, relationships that they find to be quite high intensity um, different stresses that they have different energy zapping things that are occurring in their lives different frequent scenarios even different times of day different environments you know that kind of thing we can all identify some stresses that tend to make us feel like we want to run into the arms of 
the addictive pattern and we often use those things as excuses we say to ourselves well I kind of need to do this thing because it helps to relieve the stress of being in this stressful situation or dealing with this ongoing stressful thing and we tell ourselves there's nothing that we can do to change our situations or to change our response our mental response to that situation we just tell ourselves that we need the addictive behavior in order to cool us down chill us out get us back to center obviously that's not true the addiction itself just gives another other problem on top of the problem you're already having but we can often use this as a point of self-sabotage it's a bit of an excuse making machine so the way that I did it with my smoking and with other things like self-harm and stuff was I sat down and I thought okay what tends to trigger me to want to do this thing what are the things that I feel um, are perpetuating this thing what are the high risk areas in my life where I might be um, I might have a propensity to want to do this thing or do this thing more and then I would have a look at whether or not I could reduce eliminate or reframe any of these factors so is there anything that I can get rid of is there anything that I am doing that's actually not helpful to me that's making me want to engage in the addictive behavior if I can't eliminate a certain stressor or trigger how can I reduce it is there any way that I can reduce my contact with that particular stressor and if I can't do that then how can I actually reframe it in my mind so that I am thinking a different way about it if you know that there are certain stressors in your life that actually perpetuate the addictive cycle or make you feel like you have a higher propensity to move towards the addictive behavior then start to try and think in terms of reducing eliminating or reframing think about whereabouts you can maybe reduce those negative factors eliminate them completely or reframe your response to them I know that there were quite a few things in my life as a smoker that I knew were perpetuating the desire to smoke and keeping me locked I felt anyway locked in that addictive behavior and when I looked at them and thought about whether or not I could reduce them or eliminate them I found that I couldn't for example um, one of the things that made me want to smoke more and made me feel like I didn't want to let go of my addiction to smoking was the fact that a lot of my closest friends were smokers and we had gatherings where we would all smoke and we would all smoke after dinner and we would all smoke when we came out of the bars and we would all smoke when we came out of the cinema but I realized you know I don't want to cut my fucking friends off you know I don't want to walk away from them because I know that smoking is bad for me and I want to stop so I realized I had to do a bit of mental reframing and the same was definitely true of things like party environments where you're literally standing in a room full of people smoking and I, I realized that I didn't want to eliminate parties from my life nor did I necessarily wish to reduce the amount of parties I was going to because I'm not a massive party animal so if I've committed to a social engagement it's because I really want to go so I realized that a lot of my analysis of the triggers and the the stresses was to do with reframing it was about me reframing why is a party more enjoyable or exciting because I've got a cigarette in my hand why am I somehow more comforted or more bonded or more a part of the group or more satisfied if I get to smoke when I'm having a drink with my friends or after dinner and really just looking at that and questioning why the fuck does that even make any sense as you're doing this work I really encourage you to think about how much you might be blaming external factors for what you see as your inability to break ties with the addiction addiction is often just a short-term temporary fix for a deeper much more long-term problem and when we're engaging in an addictive behavior we may feel that it gives us a massive release from the burden of that problem or that group of problems but actually what it's doing in the long term and what we realize it's doing is we get more distance from each time we engage in the behavior is it's just giving us another problem on top of the fucking problems we've already got you know I know that for me I felt a lot of relief and release from smoking and a lot of people would say oh it relieves my stress it relieves my tension when I've got anxiety I light up a cigarette and I instantly feel better how does that make any discernible sense that doesn't actually make any sense at all and obviously I'm just using smoking as an example but I think that lots of different issues under the umbrella of addiction could come into play here for sure where we feel as though it's giving us that that you know chance to relax that chance to not be quite so stressed about something anymore when in reality the stress of having that addictive pattern is just another problem on top of the problem that we reckon we're using the addiction to escape from what's happening when you grow a compulsion to engage in an addictive behavior over and over again is that you have slowly been training your brain to connect 
your engagement in that addictive behavior to pleasure basically to release and pleasure the release of dopamine etc and so basically you're carving a neural pathway you're training your brain to believe that that is the source of pleasure or that is the source of release and for a lot of people addiction can be broken down like their addiction can be broken down into one of three main categories it's either an addiction related to sensation an addiction related to connection or an addiction related to power sometimes you will find that an addiction actually overlaps and it's characterized by two or more of these things maybe all three of these things but for most people it's principally going to be one of these three things it might help for you to firstly figure out which one your addiction is linked to is it about physical sensation is it about that that physical pleasure feeling is it about a sense of connection to reality or connection to others or a connection to purpose in life or is it about feeling empowered is it about feeling like you have agency through engaging in the addictive behavior once you've figured out whereabouts your addiction falls on that scale, then what's really helpful is to think about other ways that you can offer yourself the means of feeling either that good sensation, that strong connection, um, or that fizzy sense of empowerment. And you're really basically introducing your brain then to other ways of receiving that same pleasure hit. So you're retraining your brain. Unfortunately, retraining your brain doesn't happen overnight. But I think once you're armed with the idea that that is what you're doing, that you've trained your brain in a particular direction and now you want to retrain it in another direction, I think that in itself can be an empowering thing to realise. I think that my addiction to self-harm was partly to do with sensation of course and also partly to do with power it gave me a sense that i was in control of my emotions i was in control of my reactions i didn't need to react on any kind of external level i could take my issues to my room lock the door and engage in self-harm and certainly the sensation the actual physical sense of release that i would get from experiencing the pain also definitely played its part so i started to think about okay how can I factor in physical pleasure, physical release, doing something with my body that puts it in a different physical state of being? And also, how can I gain agency? How can I gain that sense of empowerment? How can I feel like I am in control of my emotions and what I do with those emotions? I am in control of my reactions, uh, etc. How can I do that without the blade? How can I get these two things without the blade? And it was about introducing other things in that could instead give me uh, incredible feelings of release in bodily sensation and incredible feelings of empowerment over my life. Think about how you envision your life without the addiction. Think about what would be possible without the addiction. What would be possible without that particular form of slavery in your life. If you are on a journey of recovery from addiction, if you are thinking about going on a journey of abstaining from your addictive behavior, then I want you to know that if you fall down, if you relapse, if you go back to the addictive behavior, it's important not to beat yourself up over that all of your progress is carved in marble. It's not written in chalk. It's carved in fucking marble. Every single day, every single fucking hour that you spend in the service of yourself trying to break from the addictive behavior, that is an hour or a day or even a minute which is indelible it proves it proves that you want to be more self-loving it proves that you can envision a different reality it proves that you are committed to your own journey i have fell down a few times in different scenarios when i was trying to break from an addictive behavior and at certain times i did berate myself and i did criticize myself and i was angry with myself but after a while i came to this point on my journey where i really looked at the attempts that I was making to break from the addictive cycle and I thought to myself okay I've fallen down but look at the evidence look at the evidence that is there that I actually really want to break this cycle that I want to be an ally to myself that I want to be on my own side and that is evidence that doesn't go away just because I messed it up just because I fell down just because I relapsed that evidence that I really do want to love myself and stand by myself is still there 
And that evidence can be used to fuel your next attempt to disentangle yourself from the addiction. I remember the very first time that this realization came to me in my own journey. It was when I spent 11 days not smoking and then I had a really bad argument on the phone with a family member and I was so stressed and I was just so incensed that I walked into a shop and I bought 20 cigarettes and I was walking down the street smoking this cigarette and I was so fucking angry with myself. I was so frustrated. And then something clicked in my brain and I thought, you know what? It's still 11 days. It still proves that I really want this. That is the proof. That didn't just not happen because I'm walking down the street with a lit cigarette. It still happened and it's the proof that I really want this and I can try again. Honey Bunnies, there is so much coming this month. I'm going to be uploading every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. So please check back to the channel. Make sure you click the bell so you can get the notifications. You will find it beneath the video next to my username. If you click the bell, you can make sure that you definitely receive notifications when I upload something new for Self Love September. Please don't forget to use the hashtags Self Love Sept and Self Love Stories to keep up with me on social media and also keep up with what everybody else else is saying and tell your own self-love story if you feel called to do so. I also offer self-love Sunday recordings over on SoundCloud so please keep up with my SoundCloud account. You will find the link as always down below in the down bar with all of the other information. Much love and self-love guys. Blessed be. To space. <laughs> <laughs> Just set up here.